So what is an A player? It's someone who possesses the attitude of curiosity, connection, and total commitment to the vision. The work we do with our clients helps them both be A players and fill their organizations with A players. This is a segment of the Naked Leadership Podcast where you will get to know the A players of our team here at Take New Ground. You'll get to see firsthand their brilliance, talent, and commitment as we talk in areas of their expertise. Hey all, this is Chad. Today I'm going to sit down with my good friend Aaron Kearns, associate partner here at Take New Ground. Aaron has been a crucial part of People Ops for many successful teams. She's taken teams from boutique to big business, and her people-centered approach to results is infectious. In this conversation, Aaron and I explore the most effective ways to bring on a new team member. From preparation to full integration, it's all here. So let's dive in. Aaron, my friend, how are you? I'm so good, Chad. How are you? Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, your little comment at the start was like, well, you young then. It was well, like the here we go. Operator. <laughs> <laughs> no better time than now. Let's jump in. Yeah. So, and I feel like I'm right there with you because I'm hoarse today. So excuse my smooth jazz voice. Yeah, we should just, we could put some real like mellow music behind this. We could just like really take our tone down and invite people into the conversation. <laughs> yeah, find our center zen. <laughs> Think of a quiet place, nice. I feel like I, I feel like that's way too reverent for your style. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Um, no, let's uh, let's have some energy in it and really feel alive. So today, to- yeah, today we're gonna dive into um, preparing to bring somebody new onto the team, and um, loved the idea of covering this topic because when you presented it to me, one thing that I thought is like, oh yeah, this is really overlooked. Wow. Like a lot from my experience, from the clients that I work with, uh, even in my own experience of hiring, like what preparing to bring somebody on, like I got all this shit to do. That's why I'm hiring somebody because I already got too much shit to do. How, like, what would I even prepare for? They need to come in, do the things I need them to do. So that I could have time to actually do the things I want to do. What? Yeah. What? Yes. Yes. And uh, they also need to walk into a space where they feel like comfortable to do those things. And like they know what it is, how you want to act with them, how you want them to act with you. Like there's a lot of preparation that goes into doing that. There's like, so that's... much. There's so much preparation. And, and me saying that, like I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit maybe putting some voice to what some people are thinking when they see this topic. Um, but I, I've i had many failed attempts to bring on many, uh, like, team members. Um, and, and I would say a good portion of that is I wasn't prepared. And the team wasn't, my existing team wasn't prepared. And, um, and so this is, this is awesome. I love it. I want to start with giving some people just some grounding around some of your philosophies around bringing on new team members. Um, well, I know that you're you're so experienced, you're so principled in this, that there's got to be some guiding principles, some guiding beliefs that you take or, or that you have that um, that inform your process. So can we start there? Like what when I ask you what what beliefs guide or or ground you in this process, what first comes to mind for you? <clears throat> yeah um so building a team is like such a incredible part of leadership right because you're yes. you're bringing in knowledge that doesn't exist within the team already it's and the like, best it's the fucking it, best it's so fun because you get to look at this at the world through like someone else's perspective with like a different experience set and a focus on a different area where you're just like wow i never would have thought of this um it's so funny i was just listening i was watching this like natural geographic show last night about ball gooses and these birds i can't remember the bird but they have adapted to work together as a team to hunt for food and like the the bird can't throw the same way a mongoose can because it's very low level uh woods in this area in kenya and 
So the, the mongoose works to throw these hard shells at the, at the wood and the bird pecks and they work together to get the, the, the snail out of this shell. And that's what it's like building a team with people, right? Like I'm going to leverage your skill set because you are better at this than I am. Uh, and, uh, you're going to leverage mine. And so that's like the first guiding principle for me is how do we align our knowledge base or our, you know, skills that complement each other. And I get, I get to let you shine in your space and I get to shine in my space and together we reap the benefits, you know? No, no. Um, and that requires trust, right? So give it, give it, give it quickly and repetitively and just keep working at that so people feel comfortable to let their skills shine, right? Like when you say give it, give trust, isn't trust earned? I mean, over time. I mean, I can decide that I'm going to trust someone and they are going to play into that, like my decision. Does that yeah. make sense? Like, yeah. I decide like I'm going to trust you wholeheartedly and that's my choice. Yes. And hopefully you reciprocate that with actions and trust back that we're going to, we're in this together. We're going to do this no matter what. Um, and I learn over time to distrust you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's well, and it's so interesting. Like Jordan Peterson has this really great line where he talks about, he says, I'm going to butcher it. It's not going to be word for word, but he says something like, you know, trust is an act of bravery not a um, because we all have snakes in us. That's what he says. We all have snakes in us, which I take that as like, we all have the potential to betray each other. We yeah. all have darkness. We mm -hmm. all have whatever it is that, drives us to like break trust right so trusting is an act of bravery it's an act of courage and it's a stake in the ground saying i'm offering the trust it's not it doesn't have anything with, to do with you at the moment but we're gonna see what you do with the trust yeah yeah i love that we all have snakes in us so true right like it's I a really great that. it's a really great visual to to for the principle yeah yeah, I love that. Um, and I think it's spot on, right? Like, I can choose to be weary and skeptical of you. But I just brought you into my team. Like, what is that going to breed? That's right. You know? Um, so, yeah, you give it quick. And you just give it. Yeah. And, and then you learn over time, right? Like, it's like that, that story I was just telling about those animals, right? They learned over time that they needed each other. And now they both don't go hungry right yeah uh, and so yeah i think you know knowledge trust and then you know the last thing i think that's really critically important i mean not the last thing the last thing that comes to mind um is going slow at the start so really taking the time with someone to bring them up to speed so they understand what's going on in the organization with the team around them, uh, what the vision is, and really just giving them a wealth of knowledge so that they can interpret that, digest it, and figure out how they're going to contribute and how they're relevant within all of that. Wow. You know, like building up that relevance for this new team member is like critically important for their for their confidence in the role, and like then you couple it with the trust, and you know, I, I think those are free three pretty grounding things for me when it when I talk about like bringing people in yeah I think it's interesting that you talk about go slow right and we, we use the we use the phrase go slow so you can go fast yeah and and I think this is the part this is one of the parts that a lot of founders or team leads managers or whoever's thinking about bringing on a team member is like Sometimes we talked to, I think you and I talked about this a little bit in our last episode, but there's some things that have to be in place in order to go slow, meaning you can't wait too long to make the hire yeah. or going slow is going to feel painful or even more painful than usual. And that, you know, so it's that idea of like, you've got to provide space in the process in the team in the project that you're bringing them on for 
all of that, there has to be space in that to go slow at first so that they can get oriented. Yeah, yeah. And okay. then and then if you can actually carve out that time, then you can really go fast in a meaningful way. Yeah. And also, you know, to piggyback on something you said earlier, it's like I got this list of things of shit to do and like you're supposed to come in and take this. Okay, yeah. I, let's buy on that for like a minute. Yes, and let's dedicate three hours of your day to this task, this to-do list of I just need this off the desk. You know how to do this inherently. Go for it. And three hours of the day to let me bring you up to speed on everything else that's going on and what you're going to get your fingers into once this is like hot off my desk, you know? Yeah. Um, I think we forget that life is very gray. And it's not like this or that, you know? Um, so I just wanted to like bring that to attention because I've, you know, run many companies where we have waited too long for one reason or the other. Um, and there's like a slew of those reasons, but you can do both. You can say, okay, like take all this and run. You're totally in charge of it. I, I know that I trust that the outcome is going to be what we need it to be or better go. And I don't care about it almost like. Yeah. That's yours. And this area where you're going to flourish and grow and step into something new, like, let's spend some time here. Yeah. Um, and if you notice, I said three and three for six hours total in a day, because I think that's the max people, especially at the start, should be work. Yeah. They got to get time to, like, stop and think and digest. And, you that's know? right. Like, well, that's the only way. That's the only way they're going to bring innovation to the team, which is hopefully why they're coming. Yeah, yeah, right. And that's yeah. well, that's one of the one of the principles that you that guide you. I, yeah, I mentioned in the beginning that this process of bringing on a team member team member is really fun for me. But, uh, um, the part that's really fun for me is your principle of believing that there is somebody better at this thing than you. Um, and the fun part of that about that is is when they come on and they're up to speed. Your company, your product, everything is going to be, it's going to be elevated. Everything's going to be so much better. And that's really exciting to me. Like, that's fun. That you can bring in another person, another perspective, and elevate everything that you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, it's really funny when you do it. Like, I find it really fun when you do it. Uh, with something that you've done yourself for so long. Yeah. And then somebody else comes in and you're like, wow, that's <laughs> like a quarter of the time. And like, you know, or it could be the other is like, why would he, why would he or she do that? Like, what is that? And if you're really running a good team, you go and ask the question, like, what yeah. is your thought process behind this? Yeah. Not in a way of like, you're doing it wrong. Just help me understand. Um, I think that also builds trust, right? Like you're curious about how people are actually performing at work. Yeah. Yeah. So putting those principles to work now, how do you start to, how do you start to prepare the new team member? Where does that start long? I mean, does that start after they're hired? What's, how do you approach taking these, these guiding principles that you've laid out? How do you take and put those into action with the person who's coming onto the team? So, um, I mean, it's a big question. I know there's it's a really yeah. big question. I, I think that from the beginning, I mean, I was fortunate. I've been fortunate in the mo- in the more recent years of my career to be at the like finishing end of the interview process, uh-huh. and so they're kind of caught up as to where the company is. But I mean, even thinking back to when I did everything start to finish myself, like you give that trust right away. I trust that you're qualified for this job based on what information you've presented to me. I trust that you're going to play really well in this team. Um, And like, I'm going to bring you up to speed on what's going on in the company. So you can tell me about your experience that will like set you up for success in this company. And so I think it happens at at the kickoff of the interview process, like first conversation, right? Like you start prepping this person, like this is who I am. This is who we are. Let's get to know each other. Um, That's preparation, right? Like, sure. And if you're really good at interviewing, you start to tell them in that process, like 
this is how I expect you to behave within the organization. These are our standards. You know, like we talk about what what our core values are. And if you're good at interviewing and you have established that within your team and within your company, you start that from the beginning, I think. Um, because honesty is the only way that this is really going to work out. Yeah. Well, you um, mentioned you mentioned before we started recording something that I thought was interesting, which was your you work to scare them off in the interview process. Oh yeah, that's my favorite thing to do. Well, tell me about that. What do you mean? What do you, how do you try to scare them off? Uh, <laughs> you tell them all the things that you think are gonna scare them away. The companies, you know, revenue numbers if they're good. What what is not working about them? Like, I always try and paint the worst picture, right? Um, because, you know, I think Adrian says this, right? Like our, when is it, you probably know this better than I do. Like the, our self-perception is somewhere between flattery and, uh, yeah. what, what, what is it? I won't nail so, it, it, but, yeah. but I know what you're um, talking about. Fantasy and flattery. Yeah. That's fantasy what, and flattery. Yep. Um, the same thing with our companies when we're hiring, hiring people, right? Like we're, we're trying to boast up the company so somebody wants to come work with us. Like, No. I wanted to tell you what's actually going on here. So when you get here, you can make an impact. And oh. You have a chance to survive in this. Um, and so I'll tell people, you know, if they're coming into a managerial role, what's going on in their team, you know, what the, re- what the reviews were for the year before, um, what they need to look out for. And I ask them really directly, like, when have you dealt with this previously? And what, what did you do? Like, how did you deal with it? Um, because if you're coming into a managerial role, like you have to have an experience set with issues. Sure. Um, and I'm going to talk about them. Um, and towards the end of my career, one of my favorite things to do is like, I would be the last person to interview people and I would start the conversation with out with, all right, so you talk to everybody on the team so far. Do you have, do you feel like you have a good sense of what's going on at the company? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, what are the problems? List the top three problems that the team is experiencing right now. Like that's point blank what I want to know. I want your feedback on our company. Um, and that really kicks off a very uh, generally honest conversation. And then I just go deeper with them, right? Like, oh, you see this? Did you happen to see this? Have you noticed that, you know, they're omitting everything about me? So what do you think's going on with me? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got? Tell me. Give me the dirt. <laughs> And, no, you know, I, I think yeah. this is so powerful. I just want to put a couple of pins in this is what I'm hearing you talk about is in this process, you know, there's so much bullshit in interviews out there, like hypothetical, like setting up these hypothetical scenarios. Tell me about a time when some blah, 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 you know, a subordinate didn't follow instructions or a deadline wasn't met or all of that mm-hmm. stuff. And then you're top, you're talking in the hypothetical and I think a lot of that comes from like what you're talking about is a leader wanting to protect themselves and their company from looking bad or looking like they have challenges or something like that, or they're just really trying to like put on a good face for this talent. I don't know, whatever that motivating factor is, but I'm sure it's not helpful. I know it's not helpful to be able to actually be specific and say, here's a challenge we are facing. How are you going to contribute to the solution? That now we're go- like now we're getting somewhere. Now we can actually have a real conversation and find out if this is a fit or not, rather than some bullshit hypothetical, you know, thing that is you know everybody's sick of answering. Yeah, yeah. We used to do this fun thing. I worked at an engineering company, uh, and we used to do this fun interview, uh, I guess, game where we would set up the room with like six or seven people that were all on the team and we would have the interviewee at the, t- at the front of the room and we would give them a prompt and it would be an actual problem we were experiencing. Like in one instance, it was, we had a massive supply chain issue and a budget overrun with the same supplier of like a million dollars. And we kind of like bullet pointed the issue out and let them leave their team in this room through how we get to the solution or how we're going to present it to the board or, you know, whatever it may be. But we used all real scenarios and 
I have to say, the people who got hired were the ones who were the most innovative in the problem solving. And actually, we used their, their solutions. That's and brilliant. some of them worked. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was so fun. And all of us like gleaned so much from it. Um, yeah. It's a different perspective. Somebody who's not in, uh, in the space, right? Which is going back to your like preparing the new team member. I want the new the the new perspective. I want the clear set of eyes. And so I actually try not once they're hired, I try to leave them alone. Hey, go take a vacation. Clear your head. Like don't think about this until you walk in the door because you're gonna hit the ground running. And also like your clear vision is really what we need right now. Mm. Uh your knowledge is there. Like just come in on, you know, Monday, whatever the 10th and be ready. Yeah. And depending on the cer- their circumstances, I mean, it's it's most likely been a grind to get there, right? Yeah. And so they're coming off of that. That's, yeah, that's really, really crucial. Um, so the other side of that, the team, <laughs> there's, there's so much preparation to be done on the team to bring in new talent. Yeah. Um, so that it's, that it's successful. Um, talk about how do you start to have this conversation or not start to, how do you have this conversation with the team as you're preparing for new talent to come in? Brad, you should be doing it the whole time, right? The right. Process, right. But it should be like the debriefs of what are you noticing? Okay. You know, when you have a really good interview team, this is super fun to do too. It's like, Hey, Chad, you interviewed Tony. What did you notice? Oh, cool. I'm interviewing him next. Where should I push? Where wow. did Tony resist? Um, what do you want, want me to get like double click on with that person? Um, and so that's really engaging the team through the interview process to to prepare to bring them on, right? And generally, you have multiple candidates for a singular role. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, you also... The onus is on the people who are sitting in the seats already to make sure that the transition into the company is successful. Um, they can have I, to be. Can I pause you really quick? You've done this. You, I mean, you've done this process in every like so many different scenarios. Huge, big companies, small companies, big teams, small teams. How are you determining who are the stakeholders in this hiring decision? Who are the ones that are going to be involved in the interview process? Right. Because I've got I've got clients who uh, are even currently I have one client specifically. She's in this process with a couple of different companies. Each company is having her go through anywhere from four to ten interviews. And some of these people she's talking to, she's like, I don't even know why the fuck I'm talking to them. They have (laughs) nothing to do with my team. They, You know, all of that sort of stuff. And it's it can be very fatiguing and a little bit, I think, counter intuitive to a a good process so how do you think about who's going to be who's going to have a say and who's going to interview these people and be involved in that process and decision yeah um so this is like there's an art and a science to it the science to it is like i can get very like stepwise in this you know, what is the level of role? How many hours should we be spending on on interviewing for this role because of its level within the organization, right? Like, and that's just a clear, like, yeah. equation. Type of thing. There's like, so I've, many variables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, like, if I'm working in a company of 500 people and I'm hiring somebody who's coming in as, like, you know, uh, entry-level accountant, I don't want a senior accountant or a manager interviewing that person. Yeah. You know, we need to entrust the people that are going to be working with them on a daily, daily basis that we entrust within the organization already to interview them. And that's just growing that that talent internally, right? So you can get very, like, check the box type of thing with it. Um, when you're working with smaller companies or, like, early startups with the first, like, 20 to 50 hires, I think it's a little bit more, you know, artful than a yeah. science. Okay, so who is this person going to be working with who has the knowledge set already in the organization? And again, like you have to be considerate of time. So the point you're making, like it can become 
so exhausting. Oh, I have another interview. I interviewed recently uh, for uh, a role and I had seven interviews before I got to, you know, the people I was reporting to. I was like, who am I? Like, why am I talking to all of these people? <laughs> I'm happy because I love talking to people. Um, I find it so fascinating how people interview. Um, but it can be exhausting for the candidate. Sure. And then, and then just think about it this way. Like, okay, I've gone through seven interviews and then I start talking to the person I'm reporting to and I have another three hours of interviews with that person and then a presentation and then I get hired and like, you kind of forget about everything that happened. Um, but you still, it, it's still in your subconscious. Sure. Um, and so I think to put like a pin in what you're asking is it depends on the level of role and the size of the company. But I think the people who have, who the, the individual is reporting to is, is critical and the team members around who they're going to be working with the most directly. If, yeah. If there's a fit, like. You're just going to, you know, set up your company for interpersonal disaster. And like, right. That's just more expensive than taking time to hire the right person. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we can talk about that for hours because I think. Yeah. So even our team, team of seven right now yeah. um, at Take New Ground, when whenever we're considering somebody, we all interview them. Yes, we don't really call them interviews, but, you know, we all have a conversation with them and just get a feel for where they're at, what they're emphasizing, what they're omitting. Um, and then we come together and we talk about it. What are the patterns that we notice? What, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So, and we're so, we're so close that anybody right now that comes onto our team, we're all going to be working fairly close with. Um, and so I think it's appropriate. And, um, and the level at which we work, like, I don't know. It's interesting. So there is no formula, I don't think. And no, no. Yeah, and it, and it's it's. I think it's it's more of a game of paying attention to the feedback, what's working and what's not working for those who are hiring, like in your departments or whatever. Like, what do they want? What do they? Who do they want them to talk to and be with and and get their feedback? And there may be somebody. There may be somebody on in the company who's really good at reading people and they work in a totally different department, but you want them to interview so that you can get their take on it. Yeah. Um, it's funny you bring that up when you were talking about like, oh yeah, why am I even interviewing with your, your client who was saying, why am I interviewing with this person? Well, probably because they are a cultural ambassador, right? Yep. They read people really well. There's something in them that just the company inherently trusts. And so they want their. They really um, embody the core values, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Um, and I think to your point around like us, like taking ground interviewing, like the work we do is so intimate. And, you know, bringing somebody into this family, I mean, we call each other family. Um, it, it's precious. Now, yeah. see that. And I also will say, like, I would trust the decision that you made, you all made without me. If you think somebody should be a part of this team, then like I, for some reason, can't have the conversation or whatever it is. Like, I trust that you would make a good call and like would see, see all of those aspects of those individuals. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I agree. Like right now, we're still figuring out like the footing on how we bring in people and what it means and like, what it looks like. And so the more eyes on it, more perspectives, the better. Life is not fair. It's what you negotiate. Let me say that one more time. Life is not fair. It's what you negotiate. Now that's an interesting thought. If that's true, it means that everything you have in life right now, the possessions, the relationships, the fitness, the mindset are all a product of your negotiations with others and yourself. And if that's true, wouldn't you want to be very clear on how you negotiate what's effective and what's ineffective, what your strengths are and what your blind spots are? It is, after all, producing all the results in your life. 
So here's the deal. We put together a 15 question quiz that you can take in five minutes or less and find out exactly what your negotiation style is. The results of this quiz will give you insight into your strengths and blind spots in negotiation. It will also give you insight in how you can accentuate those strengths or compensate for the blind spots. Think for just one second with me, all of the conversations you're having in your life. Think about compensation or advancement conversations with people on your team, discussing financial decisions with a partner, or just getting your kids to get their damn shoes on so that you can leave the house. All of these conversations are negotiations. This simple yet powerful tool has the potential to reinvent the way you get what you want in every aspect of life. Go to negotiation.takenewground.com right now or click the link in the description of this episode and find out what negotiation style you embody. You can thank us later. Now back to the show. Yeah. And we, the stakes are high, right? I mean, like, I don't want to, I don't want to make us sound like we're a special case. The work we do, it, you know, whoever comes in is going to make a difference and what kind of difference are they going to make? And the stakes are really high for the trust that we have with our clients. I don't think we're a special case. I think that's, you know, each person, whatever your company is, whatever your product, your service, you can look at it the same way. Um, Whoever's going to come in has the potential to make a significant impact. They will make an impact. But that, it's just but what that, impact will they make? But that, and and how closely are you paying attention to that? Or are you just trying to get shit done? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the impact that you the, the impact somebody can make if you're just trying to get shit done and someone in the door is like potentially catastrophic at the at the size of company we're at, especially for the type of work you do, right? Like, we have conversations about people's like well being and livelihood, and you know that that has the potential to not only destroy our company but potentially someone else's life and like yeah. that should be held at the highest standard yeah yeah i agree um all right so let's close this out with some do's and don'ts ah do's and don'ts this there's no checklist an- here man yeah 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 <laughs> i know that there's there's nuance in all of this i just want to frame this ahead of time we're not typically do's and don'ts but i do want to get some like your experience, uh, you know, you've you've been able to take this out and put it into action. I would love to hear just from your experience and just those of you listening, just know this is this is from Aaron's experience. There are nuances in all of this. This isn't the Bible. This isn't gospel of hiring. Like this is just us starting to give you some ideas of some things to consider uh, that may or may not work for you. I got a good one. Okay, let's go. This is one that like really crawls under my skin. Let's say when you're talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, I just hired this new person and this and that. I'm like, oh, great. Like, that's so exciting. What's their background? They're like, well, you know, this and that. But, you know, they'll come in. We'll see how they do. (laughs) I like want to strangle people when they say that. Um, We'll see how they do. You're, You're like. First of all, you're shorthanding yourself. You just spent however many hours interviewing this person and vetting that they're right for the job. So now I'm just saying, oh, we'll see how they do. Like, even though I talked to them for the last nine hours and determined that they're qualified. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then also, like, you want them to succeed. Yeah. Because that only makes the company better. And you saying, like, oh, well, I'm going to throw my hands up and we'll just see how they do. Throw them into the shark infested water and, like, they know how to swim. I don't know. Like, just take, you know, take a stand with them. Um, I think that's my biggest don't. Um, yeah, I think for me, what comes up for me is like the level of, uh, like hands off, no ownership in that <laughs> statement, right? It's like, I'll, I will, we'll put them into the fire. We'll see what they do. But if they fail, it has nothing to do with me. Bullshit. You are the one, you are the one that, <laughs> continued the conversation with them you have such a high level of ownership of their success or not yeah so right on. Exactly. yeah no matter what that's that that's the attitude like no matter what we're gonna figure it out yeah 
And if you're the hiring manager, you're going to be sitting down and terminating them. And that should like hold something <laughs> high in your heart too. Yeah. No? Yeah. But, um, yeah. So that's like the biggest doubt that comes to mind. I mean, the biggest do is like to be really curious about this new person, right? Like find out what their interests are personally and professionally, what they want, what they're after long term for themselves um, to really establish that that bond and that the clear understanding between you between yourselves you know um that's like the first do that comes to mind yeah Um, i call that i I mean i use the acronym pvi their personal vested interest yeah we want to like we we can get so lost in the process of bringing somebody onto the team that we can assume that everybody is there for a paycheck (laughs) Or that they really love the work that we're doing. And that's what brings them to the table. And that's a big miss. That's a that's a huge way to miss people um, is to assume that you know why they're there. And that's what I hear you saying is like, get a clear understanding of why they are there. Because when stuff isn't working or when something isn't working, that is what you can always go back to is their personal vested interest. When I have a client come to me with a complaint about an employee, the first question I'll ask them before anything else, the first question I ask them is, what's their PVI? Why are they there? And if you can't tell me that, I don't even want to talk about the challenge. I want you to go find out from them, get interested in them and curious about them and why they're there before we even can talk about overcoming this challenge with them. Right on. That's like epic that you do that. I'm super into that. Yeah. Wow. It's because, been really powerful. Yeah. What I mean, what a good what a good way to frame that to put the onus on on the actual manager. Like, do you even know who's sitting across the table from you right now? Have you taken the time to figure that out? I mean, you can't complain about this until you understand who's sitting across from you. Right. Wow. On. I love that. I'm gonna steal that from you. That's okay. I'll gift it to you. Thank you. Thank you don't you. have to steal it. <laughs> I love it. Um, the other thing that I think that just like popped into my mind, kind of talking on the same line, Strat, is, um, you know, how establishing how you want to interact, right? Like setting up the rules of your relationship, I'll say. I don't know how. Um, that's something you should definitely do when you bring somebody new in. Um, this is how I like to be communicated to. When I say, can you do this? Like, I generally, this is something I do personally. I expect it to be done within an hour. Might be completely unrealistic, but like, that's just my default. I know it's crazy. Um, so you need to train me, like, how much time you need. So when I say, can you get this done? Tell me when. I'm really asking you tell me when, not because yep. I'm trying to judge you on your time, but because otherwise I'm going to expect it in an hour and that's probably a realist. Yeah. Um, and so when you establish like how you interact, like things like that are really critical. Yeah. Well, that's a, that is, that is an indicator of the trust that you were talking about earlier uh, at what I hear. Like if you're asking them sincerely, how long is this going to take you? Because I don't know. And I'm going to want it yesterday. So you tell me what's realistic, knowing, and I'm trusting that you're pushing the envelope. Like you're you're pushing to for urgency. You're going to do it well. Like I've got all of these things that I trust. Yeah. So you tell me. And yes. I think that's, that's just an indicator. I, I think it's in your bones, Aaron, is it's like you give the trust first. And, yes, and and believe that this person is there for the right reasons to do the right job and then evaluate and see the feedback along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, I think yeah. that for me, this conversation, that would be like the underlining. If anybody gets one thing out of this conversation is trust first. Just choose trust to first. trust first. Always. Always. You know, it's funny. I think it's like it's Malcolm Gladwell who wrote... Um, like we just default to truth. Humans default to truth. Like we want to believe what you are saying. And so we we don't even look for indicators to not. Um, it's the same thing. Like I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to trust that you're going to do that. Like 
until you prove me wrong. When you start giving me those indicators, and I'll look for them, right? Um, you miss deadlines, you don't show up, your work is sloppy, uh, things like that. But yeah, trust yep. first. Yeah. It really builds the best relationships. This is great. Thank Love. you. Thank you. I love having these conversations with you. So glad you're on the podcast. So uh, let's do it again, shall we? I'd be down. All right. When? (laughs) Bye-bye, everybody. Ciao. Well, my friends, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Naked Leadership Podcast. As a heads up, every Friday we post a Cliff Notes version of that week's conversation with all the highlights in under five minutes. Check that out for a quick and powerful reminder of the principles discussed. I hope this conversation has been valuable to you. If it has, the greatest compliment you could pay us is sharing it with somebody who could use it. Thanks so much for listening and until next week, bye-bye everybody.